This morning we got a trailer for Toy Story 4, and like most things Pixar, we expected it to be good, we expected it to be heartwarming, and it in fact was good, and it was heartwarming. Just a few hours later, we got the first ever trailer for Detective Pikachu, the new summer 2019 Pokemon movie, and it blew expectations away. I don't think anyone went into that click thinking this would be something super awesome, and yet here I am absolutely floored by this new realization of Pokemon. I cannot wait for the movie, and I am so pumped for the promise that this first trailer has put into my brain. So today I'm giving you the top 10 things from the Detective Pikachu trailer that has taken the internet by storm. First off, I think we've gotta give a golf clap or maybe even a full-on round of applause for Nintendo letting out the leash. They are a company that holds things very close to their chest, especially their prized properties. We've seen Pokemon throughout the years be basically the same game, and they make sure that it retains its image and retains its feel. They've done the same with Mario. They're finally letting Universal build some cool rides, and they're finally going to let DreamWorks go on in Illumination, make a Mario movie, but here they're doing something that I feel is even a step further by taking Pokemon in a totally different direction, merging it with the real world, with live action movies, and with Ryan Reynolds as the voice of Pikachu, and doing something that, to everyone I've shown, seems sort of crazy for Nintendo and for Pokemon, but I think it's going to lead to a super awesome movie. Maybe not the greatest plot and the greatest story, but one that is incredibly rewarding to watch minute by minute, because it's awesome to see Pokemon and people coexisting in a real way. That is my second thing here, coexisting with the real world. Rhyme City looks very awesome, and I love how the Pokemon are just there, and it's normal to people, and you get to see so many familiar faces throughout the trailer. Finding them is a ton of fun, and throughout the movie, I'm sure we'll learn just how they integrate into the world in a way that the cartoon has conveyed and the movies have conveyed, but here it, to me, just seems so much more realistic. I mean, obviously, just look at the way this film looks, but also will provide us with, okay, what happens, you know, when you do have these giant creatures walking around the city? Maybe it'll tackle some more real-world issues and some things that are more relatable uh, to us older Pokemon fans, as opposed to the cartoon chronicling Ash's 10-year-old adventures throughout the different regions. Number three is the attention to detail, because within this city, within this place where Pokemon and humans coexist, they have poured attention into every single detail. You've got shops, you've got signs, you've got posters, you've got billboards. Everything is Pokemon themed. And I think it's going to be so fun to comb through this movie and just see all the little references, all the little nuanced details they place. It's one of my favorite things in games when something like a Dead Space or a Bioshock goes out of their way to make the world come alive via posters and via signs, shops, and small things that by themselves may not be that big of a deal, but taken together as a whole across an entire game or here an entire movie, they really do make a difference. Number four is hidden Easter eggs, and there already are a lot in this trailer. If you go through, you can count 23 different Pokemon that appear within this trailer. Yeah, 23. I'm sure you saw Charmander and Pikachu and Greninja and Charizard, but did you see all of the others? The fact that there's a Joltik and Audino, there's a Molga, there is Pancham, there is Apom. Take a little bit of time to go through this trailer frame by frame and see all the very fuzzy, very furry, very feathered friends that you can find. There's a Buffalon, there is a Braviary, there are a lot of Pokemon in this trailer, and I wonder how many they can push into the final product. I really feel this is a chance to go all out and give us maybe hundreds, because in a world like this, where Pokemon are so clearly and heavily integrated into modern society and into daily life, they've got to be everywhere, right? They're flying through the skies, they're walking through the streets, they're in the markets, they're sitting on top of buildings, they're fighting, they're everywhere, and I cannot wait to see just how many Pokemon they put into Detective Pikachu. Number five piggybacks off of number four, and that's the promise of more awesome looking Pokemon and getting to see your favorite realized in this almost puppet-like Jim Henson style. It was super cool to see Mr. Mime's potatoy, squishy head and Psyduck's feathered body, Greninja looking all sleek as he flew through the air, but what about Tangela, and what about Ghastly, Drowsy, Jinx, Gyarados, and that's just the original 150. What will some of the crazier Pokemon look like? How super cute will Eevee and Espeon be? I just can't wait to see how the ones I love most are realized in this style. I think it is something 
unlike anything that officially has been done. It's very reminiscent of certain art styles I've seen throughout the years on DeviantArt and sites of that sort. But here, it's going to be so awesome as trailers and posters continue to come out to see, holy cow, that is how they decided to do this specific Pokemon. Number six is one of those specific Pokemon, and it's straight up Jigglypuff. I think Jigglypuff might be the hero of the day. That little scene, even though it's for a brief moment, conveys so much of Jigglypuff. The hair, the microphone, the angry pow. It's a fantastic little moment, and I just love the way that they have done Jigglypuff. I think it does the character of the Pokemon so much justice. And that's number seven, just the way that these Pokemon evoke their personality and their traits. You can see Mr. Mime being the Mr. Mime that we know him to be. Jigglypuff giving off that scowl is, is such a good moment. Charizard being vicious and battling Greninja, stealthily flying through the air and then later down the hall. And I'm sure we're going to get many more instances of these Pokemon sort of portraying their qualities through real world scenarios and I think that is something super cool that we're so used to them just kind of either hanging out with their trainer or battling and that's what we've seen from the cartoon and, and movies past but here having an opportunity to see like oh how could this Pokemon help out in daily life or how do they react to this scenario I think it's going to just ooze charm ooze personality and ooze the traits that have made these Pokemon so memorable throughout the years number eight is the beauty of these scenes I'll specifically call out the Bulbasaur and Morlal stream sequence I think that looks so gorgeous and in any movie with creatures whether it's Jurassic Park or this detective Pikachu you will have an opportunity to showcase something super serene and super beautiful to contrast with the chaos the battle the destruction the inevitable villain and what else is going on but it almost gives off a Star Wars-esque vibe as you see See these different creatures and how they cohabitate with each other and with the world around them. I keep going back to that theme of coexistence and how it's going to portray in a real world modern era city with a ton of people and buildings and businesses and things that we know that aren't typically in Kanto or Johto or the different regions. And here having those moments of just wow, like Pokemon are so freaking cool looking and an opportunity to involve them in their environments, and wherever Tim and Detective Pikachu take their travels, I'm sure we'll get to see a lot of sequences uh, just like this one with Bulbasaur and Morlal. Number nine for me is probably my favorite moment in the trailer. I don't know why, it just made me smile so much. It's the Pika Pika scene where Tim and Detective Pikachu are talking, and Detective Pikachu wants to prove that nobody else can hear him or understand him, and Tim is like, hey, can you, you know what he's saying? Does it make sense? And the girl's like, yeah, he's just doing his call, and I, I thought it was just such a great moment that one evoked how it would be to run into these Pokemon and two brought up this really interesting idea that man it's got to be audio overload to live in this world where these Pokemon are just doing their cries their calls probably pretty frequently and you just get so accustomed to hearing them but it also is probably the truest note for longtime fans to hear Pikachu and that Pika Pika, I think, just brings you way back. It was a nostalgia dripping moment for me, uh, and I cannot wait to see more of those throughout the film, but it, it's just such a cute one. For some reason, every time I see the trailer, it makes me smile tremendously, so I felt it deserved its own place on this list. Number 10, the final one, and it's a big one, is the battles. The ones that we see hinted at and the ones that we know are coming. Battles are obviously a massive part of Pokemon, and they look to be a massive part of Rhyme City in this universe. We see countless posters referencing a different concepts conflicts between different Pokemon, some very interesting ones. Some are done up movie poster style, some are done up fight poster style, and we even have just some straight up Pokemon posters showing two Pokemon going head to head. And then we see Charizard facing off against Pikachu, a very classic fight, and I'm sure there'll be plenty of others, both staged and then just within the world themselves. When the Greninja are coming down the hall, what are they coming to fight? Is it another Pokemon or is it the environment itself? And will there be Pokemon on people combat? Who is the villain and how will this take shape? Will there be some ultimate final Pokemon League style battle. We do get reference that Tim was kind of a failed Pokemon trainer. Will this be a chance for him to do battle in the way we know it? Or will there be some Mega Avenger style battle where a ton of Pokemon are just either fighting other Pokemon or some unknown force uh, that we have yet to uncover in the plot of this Detective Pikachu film. I think just in general, the battles are going to be epic. And from the few frames we got of Charizard vs. Pikachu, it looks like they're capturing it super, super well. I think in general, they are capturing the essence of Pokemon so 
well. I've said time and time again that the Let's Go games coming out on Friday are the best video game realization of the Pokemon world. They help fulfill the trainer dream better than any game before just because of how vibrant and how lifelike that world is. And here we get something that has a totally different style. A few people have said it's kind of creepy and, and maybe even a little spooky to see them exist in this fuzzy, feathered, furry fashion, but I really love it. I think it is a brilliant twist. I'm so glad that Nintendo allowed and wanted and made this happen, and now I just want to see more of it. I hope that the movie doesn't get in the way of itself. I hope that the plot, which again, probably won't be anything Academy Award worthy, but as long as it's competent, I think that the flair can carry this movie quite far. I personally cannot wait for May 10. This has climbed to the top of my movie charts. Crazy moment, because if you had said that, hey, today a trailer for Toy Story 4 and Detective Pikachu would come out, I'd say I'd be way more excited for Toy Story 4, and Detective Pikachu would probably be something that I'd, after seeing a minute of footage, cross off my film list, but instead I am ridiculously pumped for Detective Pikachu. I'll still see Toy Story 4 as well, but I'm more into this, and I cannot wait to hear your take in the comments down below. What were your favorite moments from the trailer? What are you excited for? And which of these 10 do you think is the coolest part of Detective Pikachu thus far? Love to hear from you down in the comments. In the meantime, though, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Fantastic day. I'll be covering the Let's Go games later this week, so stay tuned for that. Right now, though, drink some hot chocolate. And until next time, we will see you all later.